Hi guys, welcome back to the reinforcement learning tutorial. Last time we already talked about the most famous Q learning algorithm, and this time based on the Q learning. And there is another one that's similar to Q learning called SASA. And SASA is uh, own policy reinforcement learning. Um, the own policy, the, the Q learning is off policy. The own policy and off policy is quite different. So for example, the Q learning can actually learn my experience and the Q learning can also learn others' experience. Uh, for example, uh, we have two maids like this one. We have two maids. I am playing in one of the maids and another guy is playing in another maze. And then I will combine my experience and the other guy's experience together and use my Q learning to update all of this experience. But another one like the SASA, SASA is uh, own policy. Own policy means that I can only uh, consider my experience. I cannot consider another one's. Um, uh, of course, you know that I, if I can consider everyone's, ex everybody's experience, that must be efficient, right? Because we can learn from all of them, but the own policy has its own advantages. So for the Q learning, it, it actually can just learn one step, one experience at one training time but for the SASA or own policy it can actually learn the relationship between current step and the uh, next step or next few of the step and accumulate all of this experience together and learn to how to update why this is an advantage is because it's that uh, when you want to consider if I this 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 red guys want to go to the uh, yellow point once this red guy just go like this way they will update all of them, all of these states together. If I want to go to this way, I know that maybe this is related to get to the point, and this point is related to get to the point. For the Q learning, it just knows that the most close point to get the point uh, to get the reward. So this algorithm is for SASA. You know that uh, just compare with the uh, Q learning algorithm. The SASA is when you add our current state you will choose an action and get to the next state so at next state you will choose another action and use the uh, current state current action with the next state next action and update all together update the Q value in that table but for the uh, Q learning this is for Q learning you are at current state and take action A current action but uh, you you achieve the next state, but when you update the Q value, you don't consider the uh, action at next state. So the action at next state, you just take the maximum of that. But for the SASA, you actually take the action at next state. So this action at next state will become to the next actions in the real life. That is own policy means that you can only uh, uh, follow this path. Back to the code, I just made made the parents of RL method, and this one will has the action space, learning rate, and gamma, epsilon, and Q table, and the function of check state exists. But for the Q learning, it will have a learn method that will different from the learn method in the SASA table. So SASA, this name is actually um, is the state action reward state action, that is SASA. How simple is that? Look at here, the learn method includes, for Q-learning, it only includes state action reward next state. But for the SASA, because SASA is own policy, it will consider the action, additional one is the action for next state. So that will be just like this algorithm over here, we are, when you update the Q value in the SASA table, you will consider the, um, the R, this is the Q target, you may consider as the, uh, the label or target in your supervised learning. And this one is your evaluation or your prediction in your supervised learning. So the reward plus gamma times the Q for next state and next action I will choose that is the reward plus gamma gamma times the q table with the uh, state and action i would choose but if you compare with the q learning you'll find out that this one is different because um, i'm using 
the maximum number of the uh, next state. I um, ignore the next action that I would choose. I just ignore that. I just pick the maximum. But for, however, for Sasa, you, you, you may not pick the maximum value for that in that table. So that is Tasa. The, the rest of the step is the same, but for the learning procedure, it would be a little bit different, but similar to the queue learning. So that is, that it, it's better to look at this table. I just followed step by step, follow this algorithm. Uh, initialize the sta state and pick action at, at the current state and uh, pick another action at the next state and use all all the information includes the state, next state, action, next action together and update my queue value. And the next action and next state will become to your uh, state and action at next step. So that is Sasa, the basic idea of Sasa. I, till now, I still not mentioned about the Sasa lambda, which is, which is you can update, update all steps together. That is another method called Sasa Namda. That is the advantage is that you can use Sasa to improve your efficiency to learn uh, for every step. It's not for single one step. Till now, the, this method is for one step, one step look ahead. But for the uh, n step look ahead, we call that is Sasa Namda. So for Sasa Namda, if you look at the algorithm, this algorithm is exactly the same as the Sasa algorithm, but with an additional information that called eligibility trace. And this one is the eligibility trace, so it will just look like the Q table. Exactly the same same column, same number of columns, same number of the uh, rows. Uh, compared with the Q table, what we can do with that eligibility trace, that is, uh, this trace is to record how many times I visited that state. Um, for example, I just go through this path, right? All the steps were recorded in the eligibility trace. So I will I will record this state and this action in that Q table. It's similar similar to this Q table, but that is the eligibility trace table. So record that. This is related to the reward I will get in the future. And this step is also related to the reward I will receive in this uh, at the end of the terminal. Another important step is that I will get I will use some discount factors to to, to discount the the importance that I will get to the reward. For, for example, uh, this step will more important than this. Step. Step because is once I achieve this step, I just turn right, then I uh, then I can just get to the reward. But in this step, I can actually go this way and actually go this way. So this is less important than this one. So once I get the reward, I will update this step more than this step. So for example, I will update using an imp important factor. For example, uh, this one will will have. Uh, 0 0.9 uh, important factor of time 0 0.9 uh, but this one will get just 0 0.1 important factor so this one will times 0 0.1 the, uh, to the update so once I up, uh, once I achieve this one I will update all of these paths but with a different important factor how to determine those important factor uh, we will consider something like that this point is the times that I visited the same state for example the states over here and for each time I visited this state I will consider uh, important factor plus one just like that once I will visit the state A I will plus one for the important factor and uh, once I visit it the twice I will plus one once uh, here I will plus one but you know that uh, from this picture you know that this important factor is actually decaying so which means uh, once I visit it this this state I will plus one but I still not get any reward so this state may not related to the reward I will get in the future so the important factor will decay 
and for this one I visited this state but maybe I, I, I still not get any rewards so this important factor to me to get reward is decaying and this plus one plus one plus one so this is the actually the important factor or you can call that the eligibility traces so another method is to normalize this important factor or eligibility trace i cannot pronounce well so that is to uh, normalize the uh, eligibility choice or important factor to maximum of one. In the reality, this one will show a better result because normalization will smooth the learning uh, learning procedures, so that is good. Just similar to the uh, the, the Sasa table, but I rename it as the Sasa Namda table. So uh, it also has the check state exists and also has the learn procedure, but something is different in the learn procedure. From here, it's all the same. Just update the, uh, just get the arrow, the Q target minus Q prediction that is the TD error but this is uh, some additional steps you were to consider so method one the eligibility choices that for each action for each state I will have this Q, uh, eligibility choice table so method one is that once I visited this particular, uh, particular state and particular action I will plus one so that is means uh, that means once I visited this state S, and once I take an action A at that table uh, at the uh, action A and state S, I will add one, and once I visited again, I add another one. That is the method one but this one is not quite stable but if you consider the method two which is this one normalized by just the maximum of one you will, you will see that for the uh, state s and action a once i visited that state s and take an action a i will just equal to one and uh, the, the the other one the other actions are just zero once you want to uh, consider the eligibility choice or the important factor, you just multiply by the eligibility, eligibility choice. So the arrow, uh, if, if we don't consider any uh, important factor, it just it just like that, the uh, learning rate times the arrow. But once you want to consider the important factor for each state at this pass, is that uh, how important is those steps for me to get the reward so if you consider that then you will time the eligibility choice eligibility choice ah once you times that how to decay the eligibility choice it just times the lambda and times the lambda and the gamma what is the lambda? Lambda is just like number of uh, the number zero point nine. That is the decay. So for every step, I decay uh, ten percent of that. For for the next state, uh, the important factor is just zero point nine. And for if I just take a step away, then this state will have the important factor of zero point nine times zero point nine. That is the lambda. And we call this method is the Sasa lambda. To sum up. The Sasa is the own policy. Own policy means that I can only learn from myself. Uh, I can only learn from the experience or the transitions that I take in the past. But for the own policy, I, I can use all the past information to use that for updating my uh, queue table. Once I use all the past information, I will consider the eligibility, eligibility choice. And once I use the eligibility choice, the SASA method becomes the SASA lambda and it will efficiently update all the steps that's related to the reward I will get. But for off policy, it just updates the last step uh, to the reward I will get. Once you just run this program, you will see the sum something like that. Just one time to get to the reward, they will, they will update all the paths. But for the Q learning, it only updates this one, this step. 
So this compared with QLearning and SAS Lambda, SAS Lambda is more efficient. And you see that the red point will go, if the red point go another time, it just follow this path, follow this path, follow this path, again and again and again. Okay, that's all for this tutorial. I'll see you next time. If you like this video, please subscribe for more and like it. And even share it to other people that you think who want to know that or who is interested in that.